What's going on, Junkie Nation? Gorgeous George and Goes are back with another superstar from the sport of mixed martial arts. Today we get to talk to Bellator middleweight champion Johnny Eblen. He's got a big fight coming up against Anton Antoli Tokov. And it's totally. taking place on February 4th in Los Angeles at what used to be called the Fabulous Forum, home of the Lakers. And it's under the Bator Emelianenko 2 card, Bellator 290. How are you, Johnny? Great. How are you guys? Good. Uh, excited to talk to you. We have uh, some mutual friends, so I got a little intel on you. But I got to tell you, when you won the title. <coughs> what mutual friends? Well, I'm one kidding. guy said, ask him about his nicknames. Are you no longer the, the human cheat code? No, I'm the human cheat code for right now. Yeah. Oh, do you have other stuff. nicknames? Uh, Diamond Hands, and then I had <laughs> Korean Canelo, and then I had <laughs> Soldier Boy, like Seoul Korea, because I'm half Korean. And then I had uh, Jeblin. That was like my original nickname, Jeblin. That was com- that was from like uh, college. But Ooh, yeah, had a tell lot me of about the Canelo one. What are you? Korean Canelo. Korean. All right. <laughs> I I did see the resemblance because I I did a little deep dive into your Instagram. By the way, why are you jumping off yachts? You're the champ now, man. You can't be <laughs> risking all these big paydays coming up. No, I, mean, I, would, I would. I don't do anything like super dangerous. That that was like you know. I was like, yeah, I jumped off once. And I was like, oh, that wasn't bad. And I was like, I can do a dive. I did a dive. You know, it was all, it was all, uh, it looked like nobody it. around you was expecting it. Like nobody was really chanting or anything. You just kind of jumped up and did it. And I just did it. And I was like, I'm just going to fucking dive. Yeah. <laughs> One that guy wasn't was a like, 10 going in, by the way, but it wasn't bad. bad. Yeah. It wasn't, it was, it's not that great. One dude did like a double like front flip and like belly, like belly flopped. It was great. Oh, man. Yeah. Hey, just making it into the water is probably a W, honestly, yeah. considering what could happen. For sure. Uh, but that was a nice jump. All right, here's the other question. Let's get these out of the way from my uh, source. Ask him about cryptocurrency. You into it? I mean, it's not doing too great right right, uh, right now, but uh, during the bull run, it was doing amazing. But I would just say stick to Bitcoin and Ethereum. Those are the okay. ones holding up. A lot of those Bitcoin. other projects kind of uh, fell through, and FTX, you know, that whole thing, and yeah. Luna, that whole thing crashed. And yeah, crypto is very interesting. So, very based interesting. off of his questions, can you already figure out who his source is, or has not not, not uh, King Mo? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's my dog. That's my that's my coach. My head coach. Yeah, yeah. King Mo is a really, really good friend of ours. We've known him for a long time. Um, when you won the title, Johnny, no disrespect to you, because you yeah. whooped his ass. Yeah. And you've been doing great at Bellator. But when you won the title, I was more happy for King Mo than you. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, he's punched the clock in this sport for a long time. Yeah. And he won his title at Strike Force. You know, he was a light heavyweight champ there. You know, everything he's done in wrestling. Um, but he truly, like, he's he's a good friend of ours, and he was so happy. So seeing him happy made us happy. But not only that, he put in a great performance, like, in between rounds, you know, whether you're talking strategy or hyping you up. Mm-hmm. He was all in, man. Um, did you go back and watch all that? And, and did you guys, you know, watch it together? Or You know, you know what I mean? Because he, he, he was just as invested as any other coach I've seen when someone's on their road to winning a title. Uh, we watched the fight back a bunch, but uh, we never watched it together. But, yeah, man, he's a very invested coach. Um, he's always texting me, um, talking about game plans, talking about things I should uh, work on, uh, objectives of hit and sparring. Um, you name it, we, we've we worked on it. Um, that's why I chose King Mo to be, you know, my head coach. Um, me and him, you know, spitball ideas go back and forth, and he keeps me evolving, keeps me on my toes, and – He's just a great coach. He's very invested. Also, not to mention Mike Brown is a great uh, coach as well. Um, he's a little bit more conservative than Mo. It's, it's kind of why I like having him as well. But it's, it, you know, two different types of coaching styles, but they both are very good at giving uh, direction in the corner. And they see some of the same things and they see some different things. So it's just always nice having uh, both of them in my corner. Actually, you really had an all-star corner that day, if you think about it, because it was Mo, Mike Brown, 
Dustin Poirier and Thiago mm-hmm. Alves. Like you really yeah. had it covered there in terms of like, expertise and recognition in the corner. Um, <clears throat> but excuse me, I'm a little under the weather. But even afterwards, when you all got together, if you look at all their faces, it truly shows you how genuine they all are because they were f- smiling from ear to ear, all of them. You know what I mean? And think about how much they've all accomplished, but mm-hmm. yet they shared that moment with you. It was all about you, and they were stoked. So um, I think that's awesome, you know, from your end to just have that kind of backup. Yeah, I mean, I liked having all of them in my corner. They're going to be in my corner this fight as well because um, me and DP usually goes out with Sabah. That, that was the first time DP's ever actually been in my corner. But I remember he was helping me out during that camp a little bit, and I remember he would just uh, – Tell me, hey, Johnny, moving and grooving, moving and grooving, stay loose, pump the jab, whatever. You know, I, I love the input he would throw in when I would spar. And I was like, man, I would really love to have this when, when I fight because I actually spar with Dustin uh, a lot. I actually really like sparring with him because I like his style of boxing. And, uh, yeah, I, I pick up a thing or two by training with him. And uh, the last fight, um, he was there, and I was like, hey, man, I, I got another corner. You want to be in it? He's like, dude, I would love to. And uh, it was just nice having him um, be there. You know, there's a little input that I would get from King Mo, from Mike Brown, from Tiago Alves, from DP that would just keep me in my groove and keep me sticking to my game plan. And, you know, it 1000% helped me win the fight. You know, it it really matters who you bring in the corner with you. Sometimes, you know, you, you, you can't count on your corner to, you know, help you win the fight, but it's just nice to have guys give you good input between rounds and even during the fight. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to have them back again for this next fight. How did you make sure that as the fight was unfolding, and I'm sure you knew you were winning, um, that there wouldn't be that moment in the fifth, like what happened to Usman, for example. Edwards caught Usman late. Anderson Silva caught uh, Chael Sonnen late. Mm -hmm. Two different ways, but they got finished. Um, Even Alex Pajeda, if you want to throw another one in there. How do you make sure to not have that mental lapse, you know, and keep just as sharp physically as you are mentally as the fight's progressing in those championship rounds. Man, you know, it goes back to your training, um, staying disciplined all five rounds, every single minute, every single second of every single round. Um, I think it comes back to how you train and, you know, I'll have some training days where I'm a little bit off or I'm a little bit undisciplined and, you know, actually, Mo, I had a I had a training session last week where he's like, "Hey, man, you got hit too much this week, or uh, that that sparring session. You're you're being undisciplined. You got to be more disciplined." And then this week comes around, I'm more disciplined. I didn't get touched whatsoever. I barely got touched uh, today in sparring. So it's a matter of uh, training like that. So when you go f- go and fight, you uh, continue to fight like that as well. So pretty much making sparring like a fight and keeping that mental focus and keeping your discipline the whole time. I did want to ask you one more question about Mo. Um, So you chose him out of Conan and Mike Brown. And you guys really have like about a dozen coaches, it seems Mm -hmm. like. And um, what was the connection there? Was it, you know, a lot of it based off wrestling or was there something special uh, that you found with uh, Coach Lowell? I think it was the wrestling and I just liked how he would break, break technique down. I liked his style and of fighting. Um, also he, he doesn't work with too many guys. He works with, he works with a good amount of guys. Um, but Mike Brown is overworked almost man. Like he's traveling every week. Um, it's hard to get his attention sometimes. I mean, I got a lot of his attention because I would train with George Masvidal a lot. Um, and, and that, that's like George's like coach. So I would train with a lot of guys and obviously I get a lot of Mike's attention. I I train with Mike a lot. It's almost like I have two head coaches, but I don't know. I I seem to, uh, I I seem to connect with Mo really early on. And even while he was fighting, he wasn't even a coach yet. And uh, he kind of took me under his wing a little bit and I would train with him. And then, you know, he started phasing out of fighting and coaching more and he, he would go to my fights. He was, he would corner me and, uh, yeah, man, I I just uh, continue to keep him around, and, and and I just like the way he coaches. I like his coaching style. I like his fighting style. Um, me and him just, you know, have a bond. 
Johnny, can you tell us maybe has life changed being a champion? Does it feel any different for you? Uh, a little bit, you know, you get a little bit more attention. Um, people are wanting to hit you up a little bit more. Um, more things to get you sidetracked, but that's about it. You know, I'm still Johnny Evelyn. I'm still the same guy. Um, nothing's really changed for me. Um, I'm going to continue to get better and continue to beat the shit out of guys. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to be the GOAT. I want to be the best in the world. So uh, I can't let this whole uh, being a champion thing, you know, blow up my head too big. Have you felt that proverbial target on your back? Do you feel like people have their eyes on you and they're chasing you the same way you did when you were trying to become champ? Yeah, for sure. There's definitely a target on my back. Um, and as I keep winning, the target's going to get bigger and bigger. More people are going to want to take me out. But, you know, I embrace it. I, that That's a matter of me getting so good to where no matter who wants to try to take me out, I'm going to take you out. And, you know, that's my mentality. Does camp feel any different having this belt now that you, that you're protecting a different opponent? Um, did it, did, does it almost feel like another level or another gear has to come out of you now? No, nah, I think I just need to continue to do what I do. You know, um, I, I got here because I, I, I don't need to change anything really. You know, I, I, I go in with the same mentality, same same, same thing I've done since day one, you know, white belt, white belt mentality, always getting better. Um, never let my head get too big. Cause I'm winning, you know, cause I'm, def uh, a undefeated champ right now. Like, who cares? I don't really care. I could lose tomorrow or I could lose this next fight. You know, I'm, I'm going to make sure I don't, and I'm going to train my ass off and, and come in with a white belt mentality every single day. Um, but I think that's it. Nothing really has to change. I, I can't let my he head get too big and I can't change too many things because what I'm doing is working. Johnny, uh, George mentioned the four guys in your corner and the wealth of knowledge in that group is so big. But if you had to pick one topic that you know those four cannot answer, what would it be? Would it be like who won Dancing with the Stars this year? What's the one question you think you could stump those four with? Because they outside of MMA... They kind of know a lot of things too. Most surprised us before yeah. some knowledge. Um, I don't know. Maybe like Disney movies or something. I don't even know about Disney movies though. <laughs> uh, they, they, well, like DP might know because he has a kid. So, yep. Shit, I don't know, man. It would have I to know, be. Like, I know one. It, it have to be like way off, off the wall shit. Like something like I don't even know about. Something I don't even think about. What What, what do you think it is? I think it's ask them who are the remaining teams in the NFL playoffs. There's no way Mo knows that. <laughs> who doesn't know that? No way Alvis knows yeah, that. You know, you know who probably does? Mike Brown, because he plays Mike fantasy Brown? football. Yeah, I play fantasy it. football, but I don't, I'm not really invested in fantasy, like in football. Like I don't even watch the games. I used to watch the games all the time, but uh, I more just go off like player stats and stuff, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, expert picks and stuff like that. Who you should start? And actually, won the league in in uh, ATT this year. In the, okay. not the keeper league in the ATT all-stars league. So I was, uh, don't get me wrong. I've been paying attention to this interview, but I've also been trying to figure this out. And since this interview started and George brought that up and I can't think of a damn topic. I really can't. Well, I really can't. Maybe hockey. There you go. Hockey. Well, but Mike yeah. Brown's from the Northeast and yeah, but he don't, he don't watch hockey. He doesn't watch hockey. He don't keep up with hockey. No. The world yeah. cup. <laughs> Who was in the World Cup final? They know Argent. One of them knows Argentina one. Probably yeah. Thiago Alves, but they probably couldn't remember who they beat. Was it France? It was France. Yeah. See, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So just a couple more questions here, Johnny, and we're very appreciative of your time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Ghost had asked you if anything can change. And in your gym, sorry, let me rephrase it. Goes had asked you if anything can change in terms of like your fame and power and, and popularity and all that, right? I've noticed in your gym, uh, a lot of the guys like to really, really like live that Miami lifestyle. So private jets, right? And bottle service and well, yachts, everything, stuff like that. <laughs> um, how do you make sure you don't get caught up in it? Because like most of them have been able to, you know, live a little bit of that, but still stay at the top. But it's got to be distracting. Um, and, I, and I imagine a lot of fighters have to observe that and go, okay, that's nice. But again, 
this is the focus. I want to leave a legacy. I want to rewrite history books. You're an undefeated fighter, man. Who knows what what the uh, the limit is for you? Yeah, I think uh, the big thing I, I go back to is like, okay, you know, if it's something during the day, and I'm not a, I don't really party like that. I don't like to drink. I don't really like to take drugs. So that's not a big like problem. Like, thing is like chasing women, but you know, I got a girl, so it's kind of like chill. You know what I mean? It's um, it's it's cool. You know, I don't, I don't really like crave it too much. And also, I I really really um enjoy my sleep. So if it's fucking my sleep up, I'm probably not going to partake in it. Um, you know, maybe after a fight, I'll go, you know, enjoy myself a little bit. Uh, don't go overboard with it. You know, have a little bit of fun. Um, maybe, you know, not sleep great for a night or two. And then, you know, really get back into my sleeping habits, my good habits. Um, a lot of these habits are like a reason why I stay healthy and the reason why I don't, you know, get fucked up like I used to because before I used to party all the time fight and I would get injured a lot so yeah man I just think I value my health more than you know the instant gratification of like going out and chasing women you would uh go out party and fight on the street is that what you're saying <laughs> no, no 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 like uh when I first started fighting oh. I would like I was I was like in that life I was yeah okay um, Last question here. I think we're probably a little bit over. Apologies to Bellator, but um, I noticed here on your shoulder that one of them just looks different. And you know, twenty twenty two, we had a few shoulder injuries, shoulder popping out. So I kind of read up on that a little bit. But I also remember Gilbert Melendez. I don't know if you remember him, Strike Force lightweight champ years ago. He he also had something similar. Uh, am I just observing you in a different pose? Not, or uh, I got, you a have a, got a little scar here. I got. I, I mean, the other one. Yeah. But this one, one, yeah, it's not popping out a little or nothing like that. Ah, uh, that's this shoulder is good, dog. You're good, okay. This is my fucked up shoulder. <laughs> one with the tattoo. It's not fucked up anymore, but I had to get like a, a minor reconstruction. How long ago was that? That was a while back, but it's all good. Everything's good now. I'm ready to go. Yeah, I'm like 21. We wish you the best of luck against Tokov. It's your first title defense. Um, don't listen to the people that say you ain't the champ until you defend the bullshit. You're the champ right now. That belt is yours. You looked outstanding. You took out a top cat in Gegard Musasi, someone who Mo took out like 12 years ago, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. <laughs> as well. I wonder if uh, any of the same strategy applied. But <clears throat> anyway, wish you the best of luck with the rest of your camp. Safe travels to L.A. We'll see you there. And thanks for the time today. Thank you. See you guys there.